But for me, the, the, the big main thing is let's get some uh, data and insight dripping in from the top, from both a qual and a quant perspective, because then we know what things our customers want us to focus on. If you ask in the right way and you properly listen, they'll tell you, I want more of this and I want less of this. Stop doing this all together. Here are a couple of ideas. But you've got to kind of, you know, you've got to learn and improve because if you are standing still, you're going backwards, aren't you, to paraphrase a little bit. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Unlock Podcast with me, Ricky Lock. The podcast that is part of my adventure to unlock how to be the best version of ourselves and to live an extraordinary and magical life. And this week, Aaron Shetwin joins me for a great conversation on why customer experience matters. And I was very excited to record this episode because Aaron is a great friend of mine and also an ex-colleague of mine as well. And we shared a wonderful journey together in helping the transformation for Argos colleagues to improve their customer experience in their new digital stores. So I was so excited to have him onto the show because I love creating this idea of a magical customer experience. So we sat down and discussed lots of different topics such as how can we turn our customers into raving fans? How much is a customer actually worth and what can we do to improve our relationships in that customer journey? And if you are a business owner or someone who runs a business or even just works in a team and wants to create a wonderful customer experience, then this is the episode for you. Aaron is an amazing guy who's very knowledgeable about creating great customer experiences and you're going to take away some top tips and simple ideas that really will make you think why does customer experience matter now without further ado a big shout out to the patrons of course for your wonderful support to this podcast thank you sherry brenton steve mcdermott rory barnes and anthony howe for your continued support it really means a lot now without further ado enjoy this wonderful episode with aaron shetwin Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unlocked. Today, my guest is Aaron Shetwin, Customer Experience Director with Insight6. Hey, Aaron, how are you? Morning, Ricky. I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very well, mate. Thanks. Yeah, good to have you on here. I did obviously extend the invite, didn't I? I said, oh, I will get in touch one day and we'll have this conversation. So, yeah, <laughs> you thanks did, for and I was on, looking mate. at my watch and my calendar thinking, <laughs> maybe he's never going to invite me. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to prep to make sure, you know what, when we do it, we'll make sure it's a really good one. So, yeah, thanks, mate. Thanks for coming on. And uh, how's your week been so far? Yeah, not bad, mate. Uh, one of those blink and you miss it. It's probably the last couple of weeks, I say, but have been like that. You know, now the world is opening back up, so to speak, and um, you can go and have proper conversations with people. You know, real coffees, not virtual ones. Yeah, yeah. Time is um, time is flying by. You know, we're we're nearly the end of twenty twenty one. Thinking about prepping for twenty twenty two. I suppose you've just got to think and make sure that you know you're doing all the right kinds of activities when time is flying like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Think like all those virtual coffees we've had over the last like 12, 15 months. Like, yeah, I just don't really have the time now to do it. It's, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, Aaron, it is a pleasure to have you on here. I, I know a lot about what you do. And obviously, we've got some history together because we used to work together. We did. But indeed. I guess, firstly, for everyone, uh, who are you and what do you do? Well, um, as you said in the intro, so n name is Aaron Chetwin. I'm a customer experience director with Insight6. Um, so to put simply, um, we help businesses get more customers um, and then keep them, um, importantly. Um, you know, Insight6 is a UK-wide business. Um, you know, I, I own, operate, look after, you know, Liverpool territory um, for Insight6. Um, but I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a Stoke lad through and through, as you might um, tell from, you know, a bit of an accent, bit of a twang. <laughs> so it, it, in the Midlands, and as I say, now we're predominantly uh, Liverpool, we're all... Um, and, and Warrington. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, because I think uh, isn't uh, Insight6 is it's the leading customer experience specialist and I don't believe there is any other companies there in the UK or Ireland that's doing what you guys are doing at the minute? Not like what we do now. So yeah, we're, there's, yeah. there's 25 of us um, across the UK and, and Ireland and yeah, so we, we tag ourselves as, you know, kind of local customer experience specialists. So we've got the, the background, the knowledge, experience, backing of the, you know, the National Insight 6 brand, you know, which has been going for 15, 20 years or more. But locally for our clients, they've got us as, as individuals, kind of as boots on the ground, end of the phone, email, Zoom, whatever it may be to kind of 
drop and be within that business to to support so you kind of get the, the best of both worlds yeah i think that some of the services as well that you offer is is amazing as fans will know the podcast the main overarching themes of this podcast this season is just to understand how to be the best version of ourselves but also to create these amazing experiences for our customers and i know that you uh, provide a lot of different services like workshops and um, mentoring and focus groups and stuff like yeah. that but I, I guess yeah let's have a bit of a deep dive into this because i'm passionate about this idea of making magical customer experiences and i think mm-hmm. that you get to see a wide range of different businesses smes i think you work with opticians retailers uh, tell us a little bit about the companies that you work for and uh, and what you do for them really yeah yeah, yeah. um it's really broad reaching the kind of clients that we work with now. I think historically it's been retail, it's been hospitality, it's been attractions, um, because actually those are the sectors, the industries that have focused, have had to focus on delivering great service, delivering great experiences. They've had to do it in order to survive for the last 10, 20, 30 plus years. But now you see that shift across all other sectors, whether it be, you know, B2B, you know, remainder of B2C, the um, education sector, professional services like solicitors and accountants. These guys now are thinking about, right, how do I stand out from the crowd? How do I kind of make sure that I keep what I've got? So my existing customer base, regardless of how I want them, let's make sure that I keep them because, you know, there's there's stats thrown out there all the time. You know, one I come across the other week was it's seven times cheaper to just look after what you've got and keep one one of those clients than it is to go and attract one one new one at the top end. Um, So businesses now right across the board are thinking about, right, how do I look after what I've got to keep them for long term? But then too, how do I turn them into the kind of raving fans type terminology so that they become advocates of you, your brand, your business, your location, whatever it may be, and kind of and kind of voice that and share that so that you know you can attract more eyeballs and more potential customers and opportunities to to your business, you know, um, helping them get 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 more referrals in essence, or even kind of cross sell upsell across um, their, their current current client base. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's really, really broad reaching because at the end of the day, I, I talk about the word customer a lot. Um, and that's because of our retail background. It's customer, <laughs> yes, customer, customer. Yeah. But every business has got a customer, whether they be internal customers or external. They just call them different things. It, you know, you might call them clients. I might call them members or volunteers. Couples. Or, yeah, for me, couples. Yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. be couples, you know, students, their customers, you know, yeah. your employees, your team, um, or even kind of our um, team of um, CX uh, researchers that we use to sort of do do some of our visits as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think it's a massive thing there. I, just made me thinking about that when we think about internal external customers or our teams, mm-hmm. and also that there's an idea that I've been working with recently. Like, so for example, I call couples. Yeah, they're my customer sort of thing. And um, one of the things that I do is I visit a lot of venues, and I thought about this idea thinking, well. What can you do to make this amazing experience for our couple, right? So I'm doing that. I'm making this wonderful experience for them. I'm providing a great service for them. I'm keeping that great relationship in that customer journey. Yeah. But actually, let's take the blinkers off here and think about the bigger picture here. So I'm walking into a venue and I'm probably, they're probably like a customer, maybe. I'm probably their customer, really. But then what can I do to create that amazing experience for them? So I've been exploring this idea of thinking, like you just said there, who are your customers? Well, actually, I'm at that venue, so what could I do? And something I've been doing recently is after the venue, once I've learned, you know, pre-wedding or pre-event to find out who runs the venue, so they need a copy of my risk assessment, you know, public liability, all the boring admin stuff. But after that, what can I do to make that really great experience to enhance yeah. the brand? So something I've been doing is posting a card or a letter that was a branded card saying thank you, and then a handwritten card to Sharon and the team. Thanks for you know making me feel really welcome. Loved the venue. You were all amazing. I'll see you soon. And then I'd love you know, it. Send him like a little branded chocolate bar. Yeah. And I just thought, well, you know what? That, that's quite, there's, there's a tactic here. And there, I'm not doing this intentionally to receive anything, but I'm just thinking, let's make them feel special as well because they've had a tough time through COVID. But how many suppliers actually do that? You know, so going past your own customer and thinking wider reach. And there is a, a thing there from what you were saying there is what's going to happen now is that someone goes in. Oh yeah, we need a magician. Oh, 
Yeah. Check this out. I, re- I remember that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's, a, that's such, a, such a great touch, nice touch. It's kind yeah. of... Um, you know, it's it's that much of a surprise because yeah. who else is doing that that you you stick in their mind? Exactly, want to yeah. feel special and important, don't they? Yeah. But it only takes little small gestures like that. It's not about moving mountains. It's yeah. doing little things like that. Absolutely, and, and I think that it, it just goes to that human connection. And I think that like you, you've experienced, I'm guessing you must have seen in your job a massive shift within the last 12 months thinking mm. about COVID and the way businesses are, do you still find that a lot of businesses are still quite fixed with the processes of COVID, um, you know, implementing? Because uh, to give you an idea, I think a lot of people use the COVID procedures as an excuse to deliver oh, poor service. Yeah. Um, are you seeing that now? Is it is it shifted? Or, or what, what's your experience of that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's starting to open up a little bit and get better, but absolutely, you know, across the board, it is kind of, still there nagging away as a um, excuse or a potential excuse to kind of throw out. And I think some of that is because, you know, business is a bit, a bit nervous. They don't want to get caught out a bit on the bum, so to speak, by doing something wrong, you know, around, around COVID because it is, you know, it's not gone away. It's still important that we protect um, ourselves and each other. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It, it shouldn't, especially now, well, are we nearly, nearly 18 months plus on, it yeah. can't can't be used as an excuse. It shouldn't be used as an excuse because we've we've operated with it for so long now that, that there should be should be ways um, around it. You know, I you hear often it's normally yeah. normally kind of big big brands that kind of quote it when you ring up and you you're on hold and oh we're experiencing high volumes of calls because of COVID. Well, how is COVID caused yeah. like a high volume? I just don't get it, and I sit there and face you know face palm. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, we move on. But thankfully, a lot of businesses now, particularly you know those SME businesses that we kind of talked about, are picking picking their heads up, lifting them, lifting their heads up, and kind of looking forward now as to right how do we how do we just crack on and make the most of what's left of 2021 and get yeah. on the front foot for for 2022 and. Um, yeah, we, we talk a lot, Liam. CX, customer experience, is it, it's now becoming one of the main differentiating factors between, um, you know, your business and your competition for, for, for consumers, potential customers. Um, you know, people want to be treated right. They want to be treated with respect. Um, sometimes, a lot of times now, price is not the main barrier. You know, it's not the main thing anymore. And price, yeah. you, we know, price doesn't create loyalty it creates one in one out it's the service and it's experience and that that's what creates loyalty it's great experiences that creates those raving fans those five star reviews the testimonials the case studies the referrals all that good stuff that we want that comes from experience that doesn't come from being the cheapest yeah absolutely i totally agree with you yeah i think there's so much like transactional thoughts and feelings that we, we can think about so I've done this in the past where I think about some of my own my clients and my own couples that it's very transactional they buy me I provide the service end of transaction but actually what's the longevity of that what could and actually be? yeah and how much is that customer really worth so yeah. let's say for example someone pays 500 pounds for their wedding actually is it 500 pounds or could it be 5,000 pounds yeah is there this relationship that you could nurture where it could be a children's party when they get married. Most people, mm. not everyone, but most people, they get married and they have kids. And traditionally, it's usually within the first year. And there could be parties. There could be corporate events and things. And So I'm thinking, why are we thinking in that way, that traditional just transaction yeah. value? It could be bigger, couldn't it? it could, and I think, like, like you said, there's opportunities we're not seeing. Yeah. What, what you said there is spot on. Um, I was working with a, a driving instructor franchise um, a couple of months back when, you know, they could start doing driving lessons again. And I was talking to the CEO and she was talking to me about, I, I struggle to get my instructors across the board to really understand the value of a single customer, a single student in their case, you know? Yeah. If I go and, and take lessons, you know, I, I, it might be 500 quid for me to have the lessons and get past. Yeah, but what she was saying actually, the value of that is about three grand to them, because of who they can potentially refer in. Yeah, so it's getting the it's getting their instructors to think about right. It's not just five hundred quid, one and done, and off you go. It's it's so it's so much broader because a lot of businesses 
work on that kind of subtle referrals. How many people, whether it you go and talk to them or you go online, you're looking for social proof. You're looking for people that, you know, when you mention that brand or whatever, yeah. you're looking for all the thumbs up going, yeah, absolutely, I've used them, great, great. If you don't find any of it or you find thumbs down, you're going to steer clear, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with you. Well, I'm loving this already, Aaron. Um, and I'd love to find out because I know that there is, you know, lots of different businesses, lots of solopreneurs and SMEs that listen to this. So they might be thinking, oh, you know what, maybe I need this insight. Six. So <laughs> I know that you do lots of different things, such as customer experience workshops, uh, mentoring. There are focus groups and training as well and customer journey mapping. I'm a massive fan of that as well. But tell us a little bit about, if, for example, I'm a business that might be interested in really, you know, driving my, you know, increasing my customer satisfaction. Uh, what is it that you provide for a business? So if someone says, hey, we need you, uh, what is it that you go in and do for them? Yeah. Um, you, know, you, can go, you can go check out the website and see the list of services that, you know, they're really broad. But um, typically when we work with clients initially is, is, is helping them. We, we talk about being insight led. Hence, hence the name, um, yeah. and we take them on a journey. So, actually, a business will come to us with you know X problem, and yet we could go to our catalogue of products and services and training, for example, and cookie cutter off you go. But actually, that works. Um, that's only so 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 effective. What works really really much more um, much more critical to start to help that business measure the service and experience that they are delivering from their customer's point of view. You know, so kind of like from a, a qualitative perspective, that might be CX reviews, mystery shopping, for example. And then from a quantitative point of view, it's real live, you know, trended over time feedback from customers, from clients, from employees. That kind of feeds in from the top and creates that pool of data, that pool of insight that we can then go, right, let's sit and figure out what the heck does that mean? Yeah. What is it that your customers and your clients are saying? What is it that our team of researchers are kind of measuring and benchmarking? How do you compare against your competition? What, what are the themes we then are able to pull that out and then go, right, that might mean we want to do, um, you know, X elements of training with teams. We might want to do some coaching with uh, with leadership teams. We might want to map the journey end to end. We might want to go do focus groups. That all kind of flows out. But for me, the, the, the big main thing is let's get some uh, data and insight dripping in from the top, from both a qual and a quant perspective, because then we know what things our customers want us to focus on. Yeah. They'll, they'll, if you ask in the right way and you properly listen, they'll tell you, I want more of this and I want less of this. Stop doing this all together. Here are a couple of ideas. Yeah, I'm working with a big um, shopping center on my patch at the minute. You know, we're doing a couple of different elements. We're doing, you know, kind of visitor experience feedback. We're doing um, event feedback when they're, when they're putting events on. We're providing kind of our mystery shop services, um, you know, as part of being a great landlord. But really fascinating in that visitor experience and the event experience we're asking you know how do you think we can improve that we are flooded with thoughts ideas of of what the local community wants that shopping center to do granted we won't be able to do all of them but we'll be able to do some of them yeah I love that. I, th I think it's really fascinating. The customer then helps build that business and feels closer and connected like a community there. Yeah, I I'm guessing as well that you find a lot of businesses that, that don't do that as well. Is there a lot of businesses that you work with that, I don't want to say like, like, like he's selfish or just kind of fixed in their ways, but mm -hmm. it's kind of like, no, no, I know what's right for my business. Yeah. Like, do you get a lot of resilience when you meet people? Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty common. Um, that and also kind of, um, you know, over sensitivity or kind of really protective of what they've got, particularly SME businesses that have gone from one man, one woman band and have, and have grown rapidly because they've been so successful. They've now got a team of two, five, 10, 20. Yeah. Um, and, and actually they take that on their own shoulders um, and kind of, well, we do that because we've always done that. Um, I've kind of recruited and trained these people and there can, there can be, you know, a lot of excuses and you know, kind of part of our role is look, 
you know, we are where we are in certain instances. We let, let's put those to side and then let's focus on how do we close, um, how do we close the gaps? Um, you know, it's difficult sometimes yeah. because that's that's their baby in essence. Um, but it's getting them to kind of detach from emotionally from it so that you know that we get the results at the back end. And it's um it's really critical that um businesses ask for feedback because most people most consumers won't just proactively give it to you you, you can't you kind of got to got to ask it and most most smes most business owners like they they know that they should be doing it it's just quite far down the list of priorities because i've got to do xyz in order to you know deliver to the people that are coming into my shop for example or you know i've got to pay the bills all that kind of stuff and it and it, and it falls down despite them knowing i know I, sh- I know i need to deliver better service i know i should ask for feedback and it kind of falls by the wayside and in some instances you know don't necessarily know how to do it or what or what to do it and that's kind of one, one of the gaps that, that we fill but what i talk to businesses about is firstly get let's get some feedback let's let's ask but then kind of slow down and listen you know, make sure that you, you've really, really listened to it. Take some time to just sit and troll through and understand and pull out the themes, right? And, and how do you then build that into a plan that we're then going to go and communicate to the rest of the team to get them, them on board so that based on these pieces of feedback, we, we make these changes within the business for, for, for better. Because like I say is don't let your um your ask for feedback whether you do it kind of online through a survey system face to face on the phone email however you do it don't let it be an empty gesture so when you get it back really sit and listen to it and and try and comprehend it and then figure out right what what do i do off the back of it otherwise you kind of you're just peeing your customers off because you're asking for feedback i'm telling you and you've done nothing about it and you just that's where people will go elsewhere yeah, absolutely. And I think back to like some of the times that we had when, when we were in roles where we were coaching colleagues, you know, I think about some of the instance where I remember coaching a colleague that he was doing things wrong, you know, and no one would have the, the kind of balls to actually coach him because of how he'd react. And I remember the time that I said to him, well, actually, you know, let's, let's talk about this. Actually, you're not doing the right thing for the customer here. And he was like, what do you mean? F off. I've been doing this for 20 years. No one's ever said that to me. <laughs> And I guess that's what happened with businesses because I, I can't think actually, if I'm honest now, I'm thinking when was the last time I actually asked my customers what could I improve? Mm. Because I think as well, sometimes you can get hooked up on that five-star Google review. Great, great, yeah. fantastic, great. But actually, let's, let's take this a step further now. So what could I now do to improve it to be even better? You know, what could yeah. I do to have a six-star? You know, So there is a company, I can't remember what it was. It's in Jeff Ram's book, Celebrity Service. Mm-hmm. And they talk about this idea of we go for six stars. Even though it doesn't exist, we we strive for six stars. Yeah. So you've got me thinking about Aaron here, thinking about some of my processes, my customer journey. When did I last actually go back and think, let's get some feedback? Yeah. Do you think that people are afraid sometimes to hear the feedback? Yeah, in in some instances, yeah, that's that 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 can be that can be common because, as I said before, you know, it's our it's our baby, so to speak. We've created it. We've kind of had these great ideas. Friends and family have gone, yeah, that's amazing. Go crack on, do it. We've, we've set it up. We've run with it. You know, and, and when we've initially started, we've started to iterate and tweak and change. But then we found our rhythm and we've kind of locked in. And we've stuck to that sometimes, even as customer expectations have moved on and we don't realise. And then, yeah, absolutely, the moment we start asking for feedback, we then start bricking it thinking... <laughs> Yeah. Christ, what are they going to say? What if not every single one is not is not five star or six star? Yeah, and the thing is, yeah. like, you know, you, you won't get five or, or six star every time. But think about, well, over, over you know, how, how many pieces of feedback do you get from all your customers? You know, in terms of a ratio, if you serve, you know, a thousand customers in a year, for example, well, how many pieces of feedback do you get? How many of them go on to leave you a review? And then of that, What's that breakdown um, in yeah. kind of in kind of star rating or NPS rating or CSAT rating? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you've got to kind of you know you've got to learn and improve because if you are standing still, you're going backwards, aren't you? To, to, yeah, um, you're absolutely right. I think that's why bit. businesses have, have died in the past. You know, wasn't it the definition of madness is doing the same thing over and over and expecting that's different it. results? Last year for me happened. I was thinking, right, wedding fairs are not existing anymore. I attract people from seeing them in person. I can't do that anymore. I can't moan saying I'm not getting any work when 
and doing the same thing. I need to do something different. Yeah, and, and also when I'm just thinking about what you were saying there, I've seen it before um, where you see that feedback on Google reviews and then you see the owner of the business slagging them off saying, oh, God, how I dare you say that? <laughs> yeah, I know this is a lie. This It's like, whoa, 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 don't, don't air your dirty yeah. laundry. Come on. You know, it's terrible. No. Horrible. I talk, I talk about um, owning it. Yeah. You know, yeah, so so just own it. If you've done something wrong, just own it and throw and throw your hands up. You know what I mean? That that's that's the way you look better. You haven't got to go and defend yourself, yeah. you know. You know, and, and even if, you know, in, in those instances you do get a one star or two star that's kind of, you know, false or whatever, you don't think you did anything wrong. Well, you've just got to you just gotta back end it and outweigh it with the amount of four and five star reviews so that that one single person that left you a one star and was slating you it just gets lost in all the other five four and five stars yeah yeah you know it's gonna happen you're not gonna delight everyone despite your best interest uh, um, intent yeah you're you're right yeah not everyone's gonna like you are they yeah and yeah I, i had a thought of this recently actually someone a good friend of mine kat hayes who's also on the podcast she said to me this idea and it made me think about it and i'm quite an extroverted person and i like to just bring people i like to have a good old chat to find out to listen to their problems so i can give them the solution on the phone and offer them the best service and then you know drop an email and i started thinking hmm because she said what you know does every single customer actually like you ringing them up and i thought "Hmm, Mm -hmm. that's an interesting point so i've now been asking people once once we book them we get them onboarded i'm getting them to you know how would you like to be contacted you know because some people are probably less extroverted than me they feel nervous on the phone i mean bloody hell people don't bloody answer their phones anymore because you see a bloody mobile phone number now and you think oh that's a bloody (laughs) bbi call or something you know (laughs) Um, but I thought, well, actually, I need to start thinking about, well, actually, does my customer really, a bit of empathy yeah. here now, yeah. in their shoes, would they really want to be having a 20-minute phone call? Probably not. They're probably just happy with a text message, a WhatsApp message, an email. Mm. So what am I actually doing for my customer to make it the right thing happen? You know, That's brilliant. So, that's a great story. Because that, yeah. that's an example of um, previously you, you build in the way you do business your processes around what works for you not necessarily your customers now you flip that round and you you probably get in much greater kind of interactions and traction yeah. across the board now with your customers it's yeah brilliant. absolutely okay oh, well i love i'm loving this conversation Aaron. so i'm thinking about this idea i'm talking about magical customer experience and I'm, I'm trying to explore this i'm on a bit of adventure to understand what does this actually mean so if, if my question to you is what do you think creates a really powerful or magical you can say whatever you like what do you truly believe from what you see what you feel what you think what you do and what you hear from other businesses what do you think a really magical customer experience is great great question um I think it starts with slowing down. We are all nine times out of 10 on that hamster wheel, trying to run as fast as we possibly can, do as much as we can simultaneously all at the same time, that even saying the right things, when doing that sped up whilst multitasking, comes off so kind of disingenuous that you think you're saying these really actually would be nice words but there's no passion behind it you don't mean it because you're running at a million miles an hour you know i think if businesses just kind of slow down a little bit particularly where their customers come into play um actually that makes a world of difference because you know as we said at the top of the podcast people want to People want to be made to feel special, made to feel important, made to be felt like you're the, you know, the sole um, focus of, of this particular five second interaction, one yeah. minute into whatever it may be. I think if we slow down, that makes a huge difference. And as we've talked about already, um, listening, yeah. re- really listening um, so that there's no, no distractions going on, no multitasking, again, solely focused on. Right. Let's ask our customers. Let's 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 converse with them. Um, and, and really, really listen um, and, and take some notes and figure out what is it they want um, and, and, you know, take take action off the back of that. You're focusing on them so that they f- do feel like an individual, not not just a, a, a number. And then and then you remember them so that when they 
come back to you, whether that be they ring you again, they email you again, they come through your shop again, they come on your website again, whatever it may be, that, that you remember them. That's what makes them feel important. But then also yeah. do the same with your team. Yes. Do the same with your people. So, you know, one role model, all that kind of stuff yourself as a leader and, 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 and instill that within the rest of your team. Because if you slow down with your team, if you listen to your team, if you focus on your team, they in turn will, will do the same things um, with, with, with your customers. Um, and then I think it's about surprising them and delighting them. So um, there's, a, there's a brand of coffee shops up, up in Liverpool. They're called Bean Coffee. There's a, they've got about six, seven, eight, nine. I can't remember. Um, I might do them a little bit of an injustice here. but um, I, <laughs> I, I think used... I know this story, Aaron. I think, do... so I'm happy for you to share oh, yeah. actually. Yeah. Is this about yeah. the water? I put, yeah, it is. Yeah, go for it. it. Yeah, is. please so, tell. Yeah, I love this story. Um, I, po- I popped it on LinkedIn the other week, didn't I? Um, so I've been using this this coffee shop. There's there's two different ones in, in Liverpool that I've been using. And, and I kind of, um, you know, I'll have a meeting, a one-to-one, and I can kind of just camp in it for a, for, a, for a day, half a day, a couple of hours, and got a couple of one-to-ones in there. And, you, you know, with anywhere or what should happen with, with a place <laughs> like that is if I turn in up once a week, every couple of weeks, and actually the same yeah. guy coming in and it's the same um you know person behind the counter that's serving me every time we should develop a bit of a relationship a bit of rapport yeah. which, which which we which we did and have done um and then i was in there a couple of weeks back again a couple of different one-to-ones and you know half an hour an hour in between i've sat my laptop and i um i, I try and do as part of um going to the, the gym probably five six times a week if, if i can um i'm doing four, five, six, seven litres of water a day, right? So I, I can't run around with seven litres of water on my back while I'm running <laughs> yes. around Liverpool. So, I've, you know, I've got a couple of bottles and I'm trying to get it refilled. So, you know, in between my coffees, I'm trying to stay hydrated. And, you know, I just, I just sort of took to going asking the girls behind the counter, you know, would you mind f- f- filling this up for me? Yeah, absolutely no problem. It's ne- never a bother at all. And then um, I was I was just packing up my stuff um, one day a couple of weeks ago. So I was got, got everything in my in, in, in my bag together, left it all to one side, and then I'd I'd finished a bottle of water and I just left it um, on on the table. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll I'll just pop that in the bin on the way out. I'll, I'll get back to my car and I've got loads of water. And I thought, oh, I'll just just bob to the to the toilet um, before I go because I got a bit of a walk back to the car. Um, so anyway, went, you know, did, did my business, come back to the table. <laughs> and this this water bottle's full. And I'm like, <laughs> did I? I could have sw- yeah. <laughs> I could have sworn that that was empty. Like, because I left it on there to throw it away. I could have sworn it's and it's now full. And I'm like, what happened? And then there was two girls working on shift on that day. And and the the kind of the, the lady that was running the shift that day, or as it appears, was kind of sat on the table behind me. So she she could see me walk back up to my table, look at this, and she must have seen like the bemusement on my face. And she just kind of looked up and went, Oh yeah, we filled that up for you. And we know you like to drink lots of water. And I was just like, Oh my God, that is like yeah. so, you know, it's such a simple thing. Yeah. But it it made me day. It really, really did. And that's it's, what it's I mean magical, about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was. It really yeah. was. So, so fans of this podcast will know, uh, so I've got an online course and I, I teach about this idea of magical customer experience and I break the word magic into an acronym, which is memorable, amaze, give, intention and connect. And it's this idea. So that water bottle thing, it was memorable. You're always going to remember that, that you might yeah. go back to that coffee shop again. It was amazing. Like, I didn't expect that. So it's something you didn't expect. They gave you something of added value. You wasn't expecting it. You didn't buy it. The intention there was to make you feel special mm-hmm. that they thought, you know what, we're, we're just going to do this. We're just going to have, let's just go use some initiative and let's just do this. And sees it connects. Oh my God. Wow. They cared. They've recognized me. They've remembered. They've listened that I've come in. They've seen yeah. me do this. Wow. And that's that brand loyalty, isn't it? Like, you're going to tell people about it. You're probably going to want to go back. If someone says, should we go for a coffee? Yeah, hey, let's let's go to this coffee shop. They're amazing. I'm not going yeah. anywhere else, am I? Yeah, exactly. I'm going there. Yeah. And do you know what, mate? These are those magic moments, I think, that we could all be doing. And like you said, it doesn't cost anything. It's not... It didn't cost a lot of money. Well, it cost nothing, really, did it? It's free. <laughs> You know, uh, there's a lady in my local Greg's, which says about my bad eating habits here <laughs> in Bourne, where I live... Um, 
just I just go in there. Sometimes I go in like in my running gear. Um, I shouldn't really have it really now thinking about it after I've ran. But anyway, I went in and she now just looks up and goes, chicken bake, sir. Uh, I went, how did you know that? She went, I remember you. I went, yeah. Oh. And do you know what? There's something that, quite related to this. I said this to someone. This is a true story. Whenever I go to like perform, manage to get an event, mm-hmm. there is some science to this. I don't quite know how it works, but it's about memory building. But I can always remember names and associate them to probably where they are, probably what they're wearing, if they're wearing like a dress or something like that. So when I go back to the table, I go, oh, hello, John, how are you doing? And he went, how did you remember my name? And I put my hand on his shoulder and said, because I care. Oh, why, you know, it's like, that's why I remember your name. I want to remember yeah. your name. And like a lot of photographers come up to me and say, bloody hell, you're so good with names. Like, how do you mm-hmm. remember? And I went, because I'm really caring. I'm listening. Yeah. And I want to make them feel special. And I get more comments and feedback at my weddings going, oh, my God, the fact that he remembered their names was amazing. You know, actually, yeah. I'm going to read this out to you now. Here you go. This is, this is true, Aaron. Here we go. Yeah. I will read this out to you now, right? This is genuine. A text message that I got yesterday um, we can't thank you enough for bringing the whole day together it just took that last bit of stress off everything we've had so many compliments about you from the tricks you did and even how you engaged with everyone and remembered their names I'm still blown away by some of the tricks you've done you really are brilliant at what you do we are very busy but we'll 100% get around to reviewing you and giving some feedback but just the fact that like oh my god like the guests are now still talking about that the magician yeah. remembered that name that's amazing Yeah. and it's not magic it's just and that the thing, thing is you know? what, they're, what they've mentioned is um They've put the fact that you've remembered people's names and engaged with them. They've put that right up there with the yeah. quality of your magic. And I know from first-hand experience, you, the quality of your magic is exceptional. But for that customer, for that yeah, <laughs> so you, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but they've put that right up there yeah. um, in terms of remembering names and engaging my get right up there with the quality of, of the work that you do. That shows yeah. how important it is. Yeah, you know what? It, I, I've podcast fans will hate me saying i say it every bloody episode I, I truly base my life and my business on that idea of Maya angelo people won't remember what you said they yeah. won't remember what you did but they will never forget how you made them feel and we need to go out there and create those little water but bo- i was gonna say water cooler moments there those water bottle moments of making people feel special it's just being human isn't it let's just be human let's strip it down like you said let's slow it down it doesn't have to be a complicated process of ordering a box of chocolates or flowers i've just filled up your water bottle but that is so powerful Mm. in terms of longevity and that brand loyalty i love it aaron well aaron i guess as we start to kind of like wrap up the podcast um i guess if i could ask you what do you think are some simple top tips right now that business owners listening to this episode could go create right now Mm -hmm. to make their experience more powerful what could they do right now just some simple top tips or ideas so there's a couple, couple of things um, in, in terms of figuring out where you are now, ask and observe. So, you know, spend some time asking your customers, clients for, for feedback, spend some time um, in your customer's shoes, observing what it feels like to, to be one of your customers. Secondly, kind of listen and, and reflect. So the feedback that you hear and what you see kind of, you know, reflect on that and, and figure out, right, you know, what, what do we do need to do more of, less of, um, and, you know, take actions, you know, off, off the back of that. But I think, you know, re- really simply, you know, I was doing this when I was running shops, it came down to manners. I just want people to have manners. I want people to be polite with me. I want people, I wanted my teams to just be a good human being. I wanted yeah. them to smile. And I wanted them to say hello in terms of communication. I wanted them to kind of make that first move. Um, You know, no one walks into a shop, for example, as a customer, the customer shouldn't have to then make that first move. You know, the the team, the team should. Um, And and it's important to keep customers up to date, you know, without them having to ask. That's probably one of the major PR factors at the minute is kind of, you know, I've kind of engaged you for a piece of work or I've paid you some money and then I've heard nothing from you. Yeah. Um, you 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 kind of be, be proactive. I love that. I think the world is moving so fast. Processes change, relationships change. It's important, isn't it? You know, I think about some of in my own business and a lot of wedding suppliers, some wedding suppliers are booked for 2024 now. But I wonder how many times are they actually going to connect with them in that three years? I know some of them won't. I know some of them will just they've taken the deposit, 
three years later, you know, never hear from him again. You know, That's, yeah, it's yeah. frightening, it's scary. I love that, mate. I think an absolute pleasure to have you on. So I guess then, Aaron, if people want to find out more about Insight 6, what you do, maybe they want to even invest their time to probably work with you. How can they find out more about you and what you do? Um, yeah, sure. So um, insight6.com is our website where you can find all about. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's the that's the main place I kind of hang out. Um, so just, just search for me, Aaron Chetwin, Aaron's double A, R-O-N. Chetwin is C-H-E-T-W-Y-N. You know, all my contact details are on there, phone, email, et cetera. Yeah, re- reach out. You know, it might be that I might be able to help. Great. It might be that I'm not the right fit, but I might know someone that, that's, that's a better fit um, so, so I can point you in the right direction as well. Brilliant. And Aaron is very active um, across social media. His LinkedIn posts are very, very thought provoking. The the water bottle moment that he shared earlier on, we, I found that um, quite recently as well. Yeah, very, very thought provoking. And also, I worked with Aaron for about, well, I worked with Aaron. I, I mean, we're in the same business together for 15 years, but the yeah. last five years of the career we were working together, he knows his stuff. So, yeah, if you're thinking about, you know, working together, you know, to improve your customer experience, then then Aaron is a fantastic guy. We'll put some notes and links in the show notes of this episode when this goes out. And if you want to find out, then head to that and uh, head to Insight 6 and speak to Aaron. But Aaron, thank you very much, mate. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And thank you, uh, good luck you. with everything and uh, hopefully see you in real life soon. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, mate. We're, we're long overdue one of those coffee moments, aren't we? Thanks Definitely, for having me mate. on, Ricky. Thank you for listening to this episode. And if you did enjoy this episode, then please head over to Apple Podcasts or Podchaser and leave us a little review because it helps get this podcast shared to more people around the world. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will join you on another episode of Unlocked. Goodbye.